Hey there, Dennis Lee Flang here, and um, long awaited series of videos that I've been promising people and I just never got to, and uh, really making a point out of getting this uh, uh, off and rolling. Now, the first uh, one of the first requests um, that I, or actually a request I get a lot, is um, to do a video about drum tuning. Um, a lot of people like the way my drums sound. And um, I really care about drum tuning. I've always been a bit of a geek about it, experimenting with heads, different drums, different types of tunings, um, especially once I started um, recording professionally in my own studio, um, you start to learn a lot about drum tuning because the way a drum kit sounds in the room um, and you think it sounds great, it doesn't always translate on a recording, so you start to sort of develop a, a little bit of an instinct and a, a, a feel for how to um, to get drums to sound good in a in a musical setting and not just by themselves. Um, so I'll end up going over uh, snare drum, bass drum, toms, um, probably cymbal stuff too eventually. But let's start with the with the toms. So this is a beautiful. Q Drum Company, 13-inch tom. Uh, I think it's nine by 13. Um, this is a mahogany poplar mahogany shell with maple re rings. Um, so it's kind of similar to the vintage uh, Ludwig stuff that is so popular, except this is uh, a little bit more reliable and uh, you know it has less flaws and it'll age a little bit better because of modern technology and Jeremy and the guys really know what they're doing. Um, so a popular choice for these would be a coated double ply head on the top and uh, a clear single head on the bottom, which is uh, what I'll demonstrate today. Um, sometimes I'll use a clear head on the top if I want a little bit more attack. Um, but for today, we'll just go with the classic combination. Um, so what I'm trying today is a Evans Genera Rezo, which is similar to a G1. It has a little bit more projection for whoever is on the other side of the kit. So what I do is I put the head on. Cool thing with these Evans heads is that it, it sits flat on the bearing edge right away. There's no wobble. Um, so you know that, that it's seated properly. And I always start with the bottom head, by the way, that's, I should explain. Um, I start with the bottom head simply because um, when putting on the top first, um, I can't really tell what that top is doing without the reference of a bottom head. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that the top, I usually use a double ply head and a double ply head by itself without a bottom, I just can't really tell what's going on unless there's also a bottom. But a single ply bottom head, by itself, I can kind of tell where it's at just by itself. Um, okay, so head is on. I always want to line up the uh, the logo with the badge just so that if I ever take the head off and I put it back on, I know where it was. Um, you know, I mean, this bearing edge is perfectly flat, but if you have a drum that, you know, the, the head starts to kind of take the shape of the bearing edge, so if you take the head off, Put it back on it would be good to put it exactly where it was so that the head doesn't have to reshape itself or it has like a little a little wave somewhere that won't come out because it's sort of baked in there so what i do is i put the hoop on like this and then i go finger tight first i just make sure they are all threading I also make sure that the the aluminum hoop of the head is off the shell everywhere and not sitting against the shell somewhere. And you kind of just feel that with your fingers like this. And then when I feel like it's sitting on there perfectly centered, I start to finger tighten these. Now the other thing that's that's really important too is when you own 
a specific set of drums or, or, or a single drum um, a while, you start to sort of get to know the drum where, where you don't really have to spend a lot of time finding the sweet spot. These drums I've owned for about five years now, so I can put heads on here blindly without really even listening much to it. And I know that I'm in the ballpark of where I want them to be. Um, when I buy a new drum set, it, it usually takes me a few months before um, I get to really know the, the, the kit and where the heads want to be. And every time I tune it up, I might know where I want it, put the heads on, hit the drum and they're way too high or way too low or the heads are not right or but these drums I know really well so I'm I'm pretty quick but I'm not gonna take any shortcuts just for the purpose of the video what I always do is uh, I use two drum keys um, I, to me it just kind of makes sense not to um, tension on one side and then the next because you're you're pulling the head one way and then you're pulling the head the other way um, I like it to be pulled down evenly on both sides so so this is just finger tight it already has I mean it's very low but it already has a pitch um, so I don't this drum is not gonna really have to go very high because um, it, it kind of wants to sit somewhere in the middle to maybe a little bit low um, so it's not like I'm gonna give this a full turn. I'm gonna give this about a quarter turn. Now I, I actually exaggerated that and did it one at a time, but so obviously you wanna do both at the same time, about a quarter turn. If you have more than, uh, this is six lugs, um, you wanna skip one and then do the next, but in this case it's only six, which means you have only three pairs. It doesn't really make sense to skip one. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. So that's still a bit low. So we'll add a little bit of tension on each log. It's pretty even still. I think that's kind of where I want to at least start and then take it from there. So we'll switch over to the top head. Now with this mount, the mount has to go on first. And then the head. So this is just a regular G2. Now also, just to be clear, because I mean, there are just hundreds of tuning videos, drum tuning videos on YouTube. Um, nobody's really, you know, waiting for me to put on another drum tuning video on, but just because people have asked, I'm just showing you how I do it, which is not necessarily, you know, it's not like I'm saying this is the only way to do it. It's just how it's been working for me for a long time. Okay. Line these all up. One. Great. Get these all finger tight. Make sure the hoop's not touching anywhere. The, uh, so I'm talking about the aluminum hoop that's attached to the head. Make sure that's not touching the shell anywhere. Now it's a little finicky here because of the suspension mount. So when I say finger tight, it's not like I'm actually trying to tension it with my fingers. It's just, you know, Basically, where the where the head of the tension rod stops on the on the hoop, and then just a tiny little bit of tension. So, 
it's starting to to tension but it's not like I'm really putting tension on it yet okay so same thing start with about a quarter turn about a quarter turn and this guy so this is so oh, it's gonna be a little low but I uh, push it down just to make sure if the uh, if the plastic is sort of catching on the wood you know there's a wood grain and might go against the grain and you just want to make sure that it's it's the same as with a with a guitar string you know so you want to pull them out pull them a little bit just to make sure that they're fully tensioned and take the snare and wires off which usually means opposite to the low also. Now this one's a little lower, so I basically just go around and make sure that they're all. So when you start to fine tune, it's okay if you want, but obviously you're gonna just tune the one that's low or high. Before I check what this drum sounds like by itself or in its entirety, I just want to get an idea for the relation between the, the top and the bottom. Now this is a this is another discussion, and again, this just totally depends on um, the sound you're going for um, in the studio or live, and those are definitely different situations. Live is going to depend on whether the drums are mic'd up or not. Um, if they're not mic'd up, people are going to mostly hear, or the audience is going to mostly hear the bottom head. So you want to be very conscious of what that head sounds like or what pitch it is at, because you, drums might sound killer from where you're sitting, but if all the audience gets is the, the bottom head, you want to make sure that that head sounds good or is at the right pitch. Um, now, generally, it's kind of just a simple physics when you think about it. When the heads are tuned exactly the same, um, the air is just going to keep bouncing. It's almost kind of like like two trampolines and you throw a ball between them and if they're tensioned the same, the ball is going to keep going the longest. Um, if the bottom head is tighter, you're going to get um, a shorter tone. And if the bottom head is lo uh, lower, you're going to get a longer tone that does kind of like a bend down, like a poo, um, which was something that was very popular in the 80s and um, can still be really cool. Now, I like to tune them pretty much the same, maybe the bottom a little bit higher, um, depending on the room, the way that the room responds to the drums. Um, and again, also, um, depending on uh, what kind of situation I'm in, um, if it's live, I don't want my toms to sound too short, so I tend to really go top and bottom um, the same pitch. You get the most saturated, thickest tone usually. But then again, every drum is different, um, so you just have to experiment. Uh, just be aware and, and kind of um, try out the, the different options and see what works best for the drum and the situation. And Sometimes a certain drum doesn't want to have uh, the relation between the heads a specific way so then you learn that that's a drum not to bring to a specific situation and so forth so I'll take a stick make sure these are not round so that's pretty cool it has, it sounds very fat i would want it a little higher um, so that it has more tone as opposed to thud. Again, depends on the situation, but for now I'll I'll go for more tone and less smack. particular drums don't really need much for the pitch of the entire drum to change pretty dramatically so this I'm only giving it a little bit and you'll notice that the drum 
will be a lot higher than it was before. Mild, quiet. I mean, that's pretty much where I would want it. Seems like the top is a little lower than the bottom, just very slight. So I'm just gonna tension that a little bit. That's still even. That should be pretty. Oh, now the top's higher than the bottom. Oh, stretch a little. Yeah, a little bit. And you can actually tell that it has a little bit of that. So I'm not sure if I, at this point, if I want to uh, bring the bottom up or take the top down. I'm just going to, especially when you're using new heads, they'll, they'll end up stretching out a little bit. So in that case, you definitely want to go a little bit higher and they'll end up going down a little bit. These heads aren't new. I mean, they're not brand new. I put them on maybe uh, a couple of weeks ago. The bottom still seems a little lower. Nope, the bottom is a little bit higher now. Very slight. Okay, so let's put this on the kit. sense also which I feel like it does so, pretty happy with that so that's how I tune a tom uh, next up will be snare drum, which is a little bit more involved. Um, there's also a lot more uh, sort of uh, preference and taste involved in a snare drum because there's, there's more moving parts, but we'll get into that next. I um, also wanted to mention I started the Patreon page. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what the difference is going to be between what I post on YouTube and what I post on Patreon. Um, Patreon is going to be more exclusive uh, content, obviously. You just have to figure out what's going to go where. Um, the idea though is that Patreon is going to be sort of a community where um, I will take requests, which I won't really do on YouTube, um, just to keep at least that separated. Um, but I'm open to suggestions. Check out um, patreon.com slash Dennis Lee Flang. Um, sign up for as little as a dollar to see all my posts. Five dollars a month will get you uh, access to all the content and, um, and we'll take it from there. I appreciate it.